Hi, I'm Terry. Welcome to another video. First, let me say up front that in this video there will either be gunfire or an explosion. Not sure which yet, so either way it ought to be a lot of fun, huh? So stay tuned. Second, let me say that if you have subscribed to my channel, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm up to 170 now. We hope to do more in the future. Um, if you haven't subscribed but you like these kind of videos, then please click that subscribe, like, and uh, notification buttons. So, a few months back, I did a video I titled Bamboo Hand Cannon Part 1. Not a good title as uh, it implies there's going to be a Bamboo Hand Cannon Video Part 2, which in all likelihood is not going to happen. That video was about this. The 75 caliber composite bamboo hand cannon or hand gun. It wasn't exactly a success, but it wasn't exactly a failure either. I mean, it obviously didn't explode, right? But I did split the breech open right about here. But it took a powder charge of 120 grains of triple F to do it. Now to keep all that in perspective, um, a typical 75 caliber musket fires a charge of 80 to 90 grains of double F. I have a 54 caliber flintlock in which uh, I consider a full charge to be 80 grains of triple F. So for this little uh, bamboo experiment, 120 grains of triple F was a serious charge and all it did was split the breech open. But, there was a lot of work put into it and uh, it didn't exactly work. So, at that time, I said I was going to try again using iron. Well, I did sort of. Um, I decided instead of making an exact replica of this in iron, in other words, instead of trying to recreate this in iron, I would instead try just making a black powder fired medieval styled handgun in modern commonly available materials with a minimum of machining and this is what I came up with I know it doesn't look impressive like this but I'm hoping to change that in the next few minutes this is just the core um, I still need to add a wood handle and a few other finishing touches to dress it up a little this is the part that shoots. But before I step through this, um, let's go through a little boring but important, maybe, technical data. There are essentially two basic types of pipe, welded and extruded. Welded pipe is made by rolling out a sheet of iron or steel, wrapping it around a mandrel, and then welding the seam. You can always spot a welded pipe by looking down the inside and you can actually see the well is a little ridge that runs all the way down the inside of the pipe. This welded seam is a weak spot and welded pipe is generally rated for low pressure and is usually used in light commercial and residential applications with um, water and gas. Extruded pipe is when a chunk of white hot steel is pushed through a die so a pipe comes out the other side. Since it's a single piece of metal, it is much stronger, but also more expensive. A lot more. This is welded pipe. Now among welded pipe, there is malleable black iron, the weakest and lowest rated of all, and is used for mostly for natural gas and propane, low pressure applications, and steel, like this, usually galvanized, which is higher pressure rated and uh, used mostly for water. Aside from being boring, this will come back later if there's a part three or part four to this. So let me step through this quickly. The barrel is a 12 inch long piece of one half inch inside diameter galvanized welded steel pipe. I reinforced the muzzle with a galvanized steel coupling and then screwed, as you can see here, I screwed a short nipple into the end of the steel coupling 
and then cut it off flush, giving it the same inside inch diameter, the full length of the pipe, but with a full one quarter inch thick muzzle. At the breech, I attached a second galvanized steel coupling, threaded in a steel breech plug, and then drilled a touch hole. You might have noticed I haven't screwed the couplings all the way on this pipe. Well, there is a very good reason for that. The inside diameter of this pipe is not one half inch as it was advertised. I know that for a fact because a 60 caliber lead ball or 0.601 inches in diameter will just slide into this opening very easily. The pipe itself is slightly oversized so the couplings will not thread onto it all the way. But the breech plug did screw into the coupling all the way. So the couplings are sized correctly. The pipe is not. This is just as far as I was going to get these on. And I clamped this thing down in a bench vise and took a pipe wrench to it. And that is as far as it was going on. Now, the problem is the wall thickness of this pipe is only an eighth of an inch because it's a relatively low pressure pipe compared to, you know, a gun barrel. But here where it's threaded down into those grooves, that pipe is only about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So eighth of an inch here, sixteenth of an inch here, quarter inch here. Is that going to cause any problems? Don't know. Thus the purpose for this test. You could say that um, this is a proof of concept test. I want to see if this is going to shoot or explode. If it works, then I'm going to put the finishing touches on and uh, come back and put it through its paces. Let's find out. Okay, so I'm going to load this up with a 60 grain charge of Triple F Go X black powder and a 54 caliber lead ball with a cloth patch. So this uh, powder horn here, powder flask, has a 15 grain uh, measure on it, which if you've watched my other videos, you know that I rarely ever use an actual powder measure. But this being an experiment, I want to be more exact. Because you know if it doesn't work, well whether it does or doesn't work, someone's going to say yeah, it's because the uh, powder wasn't measured correctly. So let's uh, make sure it's measured correctly. Okay, now the patch, the lead ball, and we're going to, that lead ball just rolled down there without the patch. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to stuff that patch down to kind of hold it in place. In fact, I'm going to stuff some paper wadding down on top of it to hold it in a little tighter. I could have put probably a 60 caliber lead ball in this. Okay, and there we are. Loaded up, 60 grains, triple F, go X, black powder, 54 caliber round lead ball. Now I'm going to, I'm going to use a piece of cannon fuse to light this. I'm going to lash this to a um, sawhorse and then use a piece of cannon fuse to light it so that I can get away and you know stand in a safe place like behind a nice big old fat pine tree or something. Okay so I'm back and I've got the cannon pipe bomb tied to a sawhorse and it's aimed at a five gallon jug of water I got another camera set up over, over on the side watching it and in this camera I'm going to light a piece of cannon fuse and then I'm going to go hide behind a tree. So let's see what happens.
Well, obviously it worked. Let's get a close up of this. As you can see, went right through it. Entry wound, exit wound. Came right out the other side. Uh, I have no idea where it went. I didn't have anything behind it to catch it. But uh, clearly it shot. Let's look at the gun. Warm, but in perfect condition. And unlike the bamboo cannon, which I never did get any of the projectiles to even hit the target, even like 10 feet away, punched a hole right through that water can. Very nice, very good. Um, apparently, you can buy pipe and fittings from your Lowe's and Home Depot and make a pretty effective little handgun. Question now is, how effective? Yeah, it went through a five gallon jug of water, but so would any powerful BB gun. Let's finish this thing up and uh, put it through its paces. Let's see what we can get from this. So, I'm back with um, a quick addendum or a follow-up to the initial proof of concept test shoot you just saw me put my 50 caliber, actually 60 caliber, um, medieval style pipe gun through. Uh, the question that keeps coming up is why didn't this thing just explode? It, it's easy to say, oh well, the ball was loose and it blew it down the barrel, but you got to remember something. This is not gun steel. This is water pipe, okay? This is not rated for several thousand pounds per square inch chamber pressures. The pipe wall itself is only an eighth of an inch thick. And then, as I pointed out earlier, where these threads are, groove to groove, it's only about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So, yes, it's steel, but it's cheap steel. It's not gun steel, and it's welded pipe. It's got a seam that runs all the way down it. Why didn't this thing explode? Well, there's a very good reason for that, but I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to spoil your fun. I'm not going to tell you about it just yet. As always, thank you for watching and uh, please do not try this at home. See you in the next video.